What's up guys, welcome back. So as you can see in the thumbnail, we are gonna be modifying someone's frame and also modifying somebody's fork. Uh, these are two builders that I, I know one of them for sure doesn't build anymore and hasn't for probably two or three years. Uh, the other guy, I don't know. So first thing we're gonna do, and I'll show you the frame later, first thing we're gonna do is we'll be modifying a fork, a fire bike fork. So this is a builder, uh, he was out of Canada. I don't know a whole lot about him, he built while I was around, but wasn't we weren't friends or anything, so I don't really know much about the guy. But this is his fork. I got a friend of mine who would like to do some modifications. And actually, not really modifications, but more of just kind of dress it up. Off camera, I decided we were gonna add some plating to the fork. I think that's gonna be pretty trick. Did some bead rolling in here. So we're gonna TIG weld that on. I think that's gonna look pretty cool. We're gonna do that to both sides. And then we're gonna get onto the frame. We're gonna add a tank and possibly some other little cool things to do. Uh, but other than that, let's just get to work. fork is done. Went ahead and had to do some adjustments to the bracket on top. This all slides together. Like I said, this is an old fork that a company called Firebike out of Canada used to make. I don't think they make them anymore, but I added this plates on here. Uh, it's going to need some body work, of course, because it is sheet metal and it warps like crazy when you're using the TIG. Went ahead and I picked up a new tool today. Let me show you guys real quick. So this right here, guys, this is a Beverly shear. So basically what that's going to allow me to do is cut when I'm cutting metal. Now my shear that I have over there only really allows me to cut things straight. This will allow me to curve cut things. So as I'm putting it in, it's throatless, which means it can actually wrap itself around and I can cut things in angles. I picked that up because I knew I'm doing a lot of tank stuff and that's what I'm gonna be doing on this frame. I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, just, I knew figured with doing tanks, that was a good investment. Got it on sale anyway. But let's go grab the frame, show you what we're going to do next. Hey guys, I am so sorry for the interruption. But if you could, could you click that subscribe button for me? Also, turn on your bell notifications. That way you catch all the content as I post it. And if you want to check out anything early, head over to my Instagram. I post things there probably quicker than you're going to see them here. Thanks guys. There's the frame, guys. So this frame was known by a builder named Akuda Customs. This was back, uh, he doesn't build anymore, and I believe the frame was built uh, probably four or some odd years ago. He was a builder back when I first started, and uh, he was definitely a builder that was, his frame designs were before their time, really. I mean, this still, this frame still has really cool lines and a lot of cool things that he did to it by like using smaller tube down on the bottom here uh, or attaching the bottom bracket in between you know two open areas uh the way he curved it here and then kicked it back that way uh just a lot of cool little accents that uh, are still to this day actually pretty cool designs you know it was a really good frame 
Uh, but here, like I said, no longer building frames anymore. Uh, there is a guy out there who his style's very similar, so uh, that he's building. But anyway, we are only just doing an aluminum tank here. I need to come up with how I want to, because I need to mimic this a little bit. I kind of want to do something like that in the tank. So it's going to be a bolt-on aluminum tank. We do have quite a bit of room in here, so it will be floating. Uh, I don't know that I can attach it unless I run it out this way to here, maybe. Maybe we can run it on the inside of that bar. Be kind of neat. Maybe try to get the aluminum to kind of turn. That'd be kind of cool. We'll do a bolt-on, and then I kind of want to have it to where I bead roll it, and then as I bead roll it, the bead roll come to here, and then kind of maybe come to a point in this area here. I don't know, we'll see. Let's play around with it a little bit and uh, see what we can come up with. Tick-tock time's off, but I make a move Don't think twice now, you got things to prove I'm not playing, I'm not hard to get Cause when I saw you, there was nothing else So this bike is kicking my ass. So we were gonna go run. I was working on the shifter mechanism and we were gonna put the shifter here, but then come to find out that this frame wasn't really meant to house bracket. That hole needs to be down. Well, anyway, that's not gonna work. So that was for nothing. I'm not chopping it up any more than we already did. Um, getting the head tube ready to go. I did finally get the cups in there, but the top of the head tube was ovaled out. I don't know why. I don't know if it was from heat or what, but it was ovaled out, but I was able to get that in. Uh, next thing, kickstand. Kickstand really had barely anywhere to go because of how close these are, but we were able to get it in there, so that's good. So we're just running back and forth on what else we're gonna do. The fork itself is not long enough at the top, so when I put it on, we had about this much left where you couldn't put the top hat on. So what I think I'll do is I'll just take welds some one inch, make it a little bit taller. I don't think that thing's really there to do much structural wise. Uh, it's just the top hat to the fork and it just sits there anyway. It doesn't bolt on or anything like that. So I don't think that's gonna hurt anything. We'll probably take weld that on, smooth it out. Once, I'm, I'm gonna come back to that. And I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get on the tank because I need a win. This thing's kicking my butt. So, but we're gonna hit on that tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow.
All right, guys, welcome back, and we are in another day of fun-filled activities. Let's get started on the tank. I want to get started on some fun stuff. So just picked up some cardboard, um, just kind of pushing it up against here so I can see where it needs to go, and then I'll cut it out first. Uh, also figuring out where I want to run my bead rolls. I did order a shrinker and a stretcher, which I was told will help with using the thin metal and uh, being able to stop it from pancaking. I've never used one before, so that'll probably be in next week, probably after this video is out. And I do want to build a stand for it so that I have somewhere in this vicinity area of mess where I can even put it. I don't know. I need a bigger shop, almost. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started on the tank.
talk, time's out, but I make a move Don't think twice now, you got things to prove I'm not playing, I'm not hard to get Cause when I saw you, there was nothing else And I got dreams, so let us open up a bottle Some of you guys have seen me make tanks before, some of my new subscribers probably not, but what I've done here is I've cut out some templates. A lot of these holes are going to just be faux holes. So basically there's going to be a rib nut in them and a bolt to give it that rib nut look all the way around it or give it that almost like it has a, almost like it has rivets all the way around it, but some of them are going to actually bolt. Now that frame, I can't make anything bolt to the bottom of the tank, so what I'm going to do on some of these, we're gonna run a bracket that goes all the way across it, like so. So this one will go like that, this one like that, you know what I'm saying. This one will be like something like that. This one over here, go in there. We've got one for this back end and lastly we'll have one that goes here so it will have a few mounting points like these are going to have mounting points mounts there 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 and what that's going to allow me to do is because like i said once you start bead rolling this thinner metal it does warp it it makes it almost kind of potato chip and i don't have my shrinker stretcher in yet so uh, this is going to get done today so this is going to get done before that but this will allow it to kind of really like straighten itself out because of the metal we're using some uh, 16 I think it's about 16 to 14 gauge maybe i picked it up at the local metal shop uh, these are remnants so they have them cut out which is perfect because that's about how much i need uh, these right here will just have bolts in them to give it that look and you guys might also see that they have uh, have gold rivets the reason we did the little gold washers was because the wheels that he's using on this are black with the gold lips or the gold nipples plus we have the gold colored headset which that's what kind of matched or which helped match these little gold dudes here. So I think that's pretty cool. You guys can see them. So let's get back, enough talking. Let's get back to work, finish this up today.
Okay, tiny backtracking here. When my idea was, was to take these and run them all the way down so that it bolted to the top and the bottom, I didn't realize that once I got it in, I wasn't gonna be able to get to the actual bolts because when I did the tracing, I followed the upper line so that it would sit in there like that. And then these lower bolts here were touching. So I ended up having to cut it off. Well, so the bottom here is all gonna be just basically fake nuts. They're gonna look, like I said, they look like this. These washers can be flush mounted, but because I found these here a little easier, they're gonna go around and they'll go around this. So I'm just gonna attach these really quick and then we're gonna get started on the other side. And I think what I'll do is once I run the other side, I'm gonna box the two together so that there's some, I mean, they're not, they're pretty strong, not going anywhere, but either way, I think I'm just gonna box the bottoms. So that way they're touching and they're connected and holding each other. And then I don't think I even need to really bother with welding anything else. This is really on there. I put some pretty heavy MIG tacks on the inside of there. So I think we're good. Once that's done, we can get on to finishing the fork and we'll throw it together and see how she came out.
was a lot of work, but tank's done. Tank is on both sides. Looks pretty cool. If I would have changed anything, I probably would have raised that center area because like those bolts are kind of just hiding back there, but it still looks pretty cool. Fork is done here. You can see where we have the issue. So the plan is, is I have some square tube over here that was cut at the uh, metal shop. So I know that part's flat. I'm gonna stick that in there and I'm just gonna TIG that on there. And then I should be able to clean it up and then I'll cut it up here so that you won't even see it. Uh, that's the best idea that I think I can come up with. Uh, I know it'll work. Like I said, I don't think that's doing much anyway because like it's pretty flimsy. So I don't think it's doing a whole lot other than just holding the top of the fork in there, but eh, whatever. Let's knock that out and we're done with this. guys and that wraps that one up that was a butt kicker no doubt uh, I know we missed last Sunday just because it was Easter and everything else was going on I didn't have time I didn't finish this video yet and I wanted to get you a full video out I do want to thank you guys the last video that I did of rat tail oh man biggest video that I've ever done so thank you everybody who commented and subscribed and I uh, gained like a hundred some odd more subscribers. That's super awesome and I really appreciate it. So I want to thank you if you're still watching. I do appreciate it guys. It means the world to me because uh, I was pretty close to packing it up. <laughs> Had that video not done well, I don't know if you were going to see any more. So I do appreciate it guys. Thank you. Um, I've got some big builds planned. So if we can keep that momentum up, I've got an e-bike coming that we're looking at doing with some carbon fiber. It's going to be awesome. I uh, got a, another big build that I want to do for my personal self because Rat Tail is sold. That one's going to be out of here. So <laughs> the wheel uh, Chuck bought it um, for his own collection, which I think is super awesome. Going to keep it around. Uh, anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more, and I do thank you again.